You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey. If you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. We're live right now for the Tyreek Hill news, but also getting to your questions coming out of it and across the NFL here with the latest NFL news and rumors. So if you haven't already, subscribe, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. From Mike Sweet, Miami should trade Tua to Seattle and then trade for Baker. Then depending on QBs in the draft next year, see what upgrades could potentially happen. Why are you making what is at best a lateral and more expensive move at QB? Um, I don't think, honestly, I don't think that makes any sense for Miami. I think Seattle would have interest in it. I think Tua is better than Baker after what happened this past year for, for Mayfield, plus his large contract. So I would be of the mindset that that doesn't make any sense for Miami. Give two of the year. If it doesn't work out with all these weapons and upgraded offensive line, then yes, look at upgrades next season. All right, from Jacob Raleigh, what happens to Jordan Love? It's a great question. Um, I... I don't know what the likely outcome here is. Uh, I don't know who wants him. His contract is not a particularly great one uh, to deal with in terms of being a former first-round pick, having low value. So a day three pick to somebody, but who's going to spend a day three pick and think Love's your guy? You're kind of not investing all the way in him. So uh, Love's kind of in a rough spot moving forward, I believe. All right, Stephen Rockwell. Chiefs trade for DK Metcalf now. Now, um, hmm, I don't think the Seahawks would give him up, but I'd call, offer a first round, one of your two first round picks for Metcalf. Obviously, you got to pay DK as well, and that could be a problem since the Chiefs apparently don't want to pay big money to the receiver. But Metcalf's younger and doesn't carry the off the field stuff that Hill did as well. So I, I'm open to that idea. I don't know if it's the most likely outcome, but I think it's worth considering from that standpoint. Super chat time from Joey uh, Pan. The fact only had to part with one first rounder and one second rounder, two fourths and a six. That's crazy. Allegedly, the Dolphins wanted two firsts. I think the Jets' offer, by the way, was going to be better than what the Dolphins offered, but I guess Tyreek wanted to go to Miami instead. All right, Teddy Allen. Should the Ravens trade for James Bradbury? What are you going to do at nickel is my real concern. I don't think Bradbury plays. And you can put Marlon Humphrey in there at points. They've done that before as kind of like the, the shadow flex piece along the cornerback spot. But I also don't know if that is a likely outcome. I don't think Bradbury's a, an ideal fit for the Ravens. So I don't hate it, but not the path I'd probably go. Who has been the NFL's biggest offseason loser? So far, maybe it's the Chiefs after the Tyreek Hill, although I thought they were crushing the offseason before that. Let me know in the comments who the biggest loser was. You guys can be a hater. Let me know in the comments which team you think is in the worst spot. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know who the biggest offseason loser is so far. You can be mean. It's a safe spot to do that. All right, from Chase Joslin, Dolphins contenders for the AFC East now. Possibly. I still think the Bills are the favorites, but you look at it what, as loaded as the AFC is at minimum. They, I mean, they were almost playoff team last year, right? They got better on offense. The Titans, I still think, and the Colts are going to run kind of the, the AFC South here. But it is the Dolphins and the Bills in the AFC East. Then it maybe is the Patriots down there as the three seed because they haven't gotten any better as of late. The AFC West is still stacked. It is going to be a highly competitive uh, conference to win games and have success. So they're contenders, but there are a lot of contenders in the AFC overall. Hagan House right possible spot for Devontae Parker. Good question. Um, I, w I could see them shopping him, although maybe you roll it back because oh, you did just sign Cedric Wilson too, right? You have Cedric Wilson, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Preston Williams, I guess, is back. If you make Preston your five. I could see them shopping Devontae Parker. That's a really good point that I hadn't thought about until just now, Hagan. Um, Jets won him. They were obviously interested there. Packers? Packers would be a great fit, I think, for Devontae Parker as, as a big-body threat. So I would shop Devontae. He's not going to bring you back that much, however. 
Mr. Payne, 5-2-2. Two, two. Do you see any teams double dipping in the same position in the first round, i.e. the Chiefs uh, pick two receivers in round one? I think the two that make sense the most to me is the Chiefs and the Packers. What if they were to double dip at the wide receiver spot? Your other teams with multiple first round picks, the Giants and Jets, if I can cheat by saying two offensive linemen for New York, I think for the Giants, I think that could make sense. I don't know if the Jets would double dip. Philadelphia has three first round picks. I think they're going to spread that out over multiple positions. So the ones that I would watch for are the Chiefs, like you mentioned, and the Packers going wide receiver as well. NFL Daily is now on Rumble. If you haven't already, go follow us and support us over there at rumble.com slash NFL Daily. We've got uncensored videos, so when I drop F-bombs, I don't get yelled at. Check the comment section and the description. We'll put that link in there for you guys in the comment section. It's rumble.com slash NFL Daily. From Brokov, as Mitch burps very loudly in the studio here, uh, I thought you weren't drinking today. Uh, should the Chiefs sign Julio Jones or Cole Beasley? So just where it sits right now for KC. Juju Smith-Schuster, Miko Hardman, Josh Gordon, Therese Fontaine, Corey Coleman. I, I think that Juju will get plenty of slot reps, so I don't think Beasley makes the, the most sense. Julio, though, I, I do worry that his value is more or less – kind of washed up at this point. So I would have interest, but I think draft. Maybe Jamison Williams round one makes a lot of sense now for KC. All right, Ozzy Guillen, thoughts on Cole Beasley joining the Steelers since he played with Mitch last year. They didn't play that much, but they were on the same team, so sure. It depends on how you want to utilize your wide receivers. A lot of Cole Beasley questions today, which I think is fair. Um, you've got Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. Those are two of your guys. Do you want to have one of them be your slot? If so, Cole doesn't make sense for you. If you want to keep on the outside, which I think they can both do both to an extent, then, yeah, I do think at that point Cole Beasley makes sense for Pittsburgh. Speaking of the AFC North, who is the best QB right now in that division? Type in four for it's Deshaun Watson. Type in nine for it's Joe Burrow. Eight for Lamar Jackson or ten for... For Mitchell Trubisky. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section right now. From Johan Camarco. I think that's, I think that's how you pronounce it, Johan. We'll see. That's how my dad used to pronounce it. Uh, now with first and second gone, what is Miami going to do with the rest of their draft picks left? So I'm looking right now. Miami has a late third, third or 102 overall. Uh, so they will simply take the best player on the board. Maybe you look for a center there, another guard option. Maybe a double dip at offensive line. Um, the, the, the draft is now no longer a priority for Miami. They got Tyree Kill. It's fine there in the end. Alexander M., the Raiders going to draft Mitchell Renz for Waterboy in round 12. Mitch is not uh, out there anymore, so I can't give him any grief for it. But I, I could see Mitch being a, a, a bad Waterboy. I feel like he would accidentally put vodka in it one day. Uh, that, that, that'd be my concern there. Except it wouldn't be on accident. All right, next up from Alfredo Rodriguez. We'll get to the Super Chats just came in too here. Jair Alexander trade next. God, if the Packers traded away Alexander and Devontae Adams, fire the Oregon to the sun. Don't, that, I, that'd be horrible. The Packers are still trying to win games right now and trading away one of the premier young corners, one of the premier best corners in the NFL is... Not how good teams tend to operate business. All right, Roger Moore. What would it cost for the Cowboys to trade up for Kayvon Thibodeau in the event he fell a few spots? And do they even have the draft capital? So what do you mean by a few spots? Do you mean like pick nine, eight, seven, where they could try to trade up for teams that want extra draft capital? You got to move your first next year. Two firsts is what it would cost to go get Kayvon Thibodeau. So if he slides to nine, maybe offer 24 and a first next year, I don't think the Cowboys would do that. And that's kind of like your minimum, I think, offer you would have to make. Because your first and your second this year, I've got the draft tr uh, trade chart pulled up here right now. That gets you to about pick 13-ish. 
So maybe your first gets you higher, but you still might have to throw in more there. But thanks for the super chat there, Roger. All right, from Robert, what do you think the Raiders do next? Should they inquire about Devontae Parker? Do they need another receiver? Like, you've got Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Brian, Ro or Brian Edwards, Uris, you added uh, Demarcus Robinson as well. So you can call about Devontae Parker. I don't know if you want to take on that contract. You're probably trying to go cheaper. If I'm the Raiders, my next move is I'm looking offensive line. I, I got question marks at guard. I got question marks at center and question marks at, at even right tackle to an extent. So I'm looking offensive line next if I'm the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, if you want more NFL videos throughout the offseason, free agency begins to wide, wind down, but the trades and the draft are just around the corner. So if you haven't already, subscribe. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. From Ballsy, should the Vikings try to bring back Xavier Rhodes? I don't know if Rhodes fits the scheme anymore in, in Minnesota a different style than what they want I would probably just re-sign Patrick Peterson and keep an eye on it in round one looking at corner Derek Stingley could very well be there for that organization so I would have a lot of interest there if he does become available from Peter Zampino does Chiefs now the Chiefs now go Jamison Williams at 29 if available or do they go with Olave or another prospect um you take the best receiver on the board if one of the, the, the big five or even Jahan Dotson or Sky Moore, whoever you like, is there. Chiefs got 29 and 30. You got to go receiver with one of those two picks. I think Jamison Williams is the ideal replacement. Ideal is, you know, maybe a, a bit of a loose word there, but I'd be looking receiver heavily if I were KC. Steven Handel, and then let's get to Jacob's super chat here. Are the Dolphins now contenders in the AFC? It's kind of asked this one earlier, but yeah, I think they are. The, the, the Bills are, of course, the favorites still. Patriots aren't bad, despite what producer Jack is in shambles over. And then the Jets, of course, are last. From Jacob Raleigh, if all three players are available, who should the Ravens take? Charles Cross, Jordan Davis, or Tyler Linderbaum? It's a great question. Uh, I... I could actually see probably not Cross on the board, but maybe Cross, Linderbaum, and Davis all have first-round grades on me. So if you take one of them, I think you feel great. I, I think you could see a scenario in which Patrick McCarry plays center, so I would be fine with that move if you want to pass on Linderbaum. I don't think he's a scheme fit. You added Michael Pierce. Maybe you don't need Jordan Davis there. If you are worried about Ronnie Stanley long term, you almost have to take Charles Cross. I, I think I on my board, they're going to be ranked Linderbaum. Then I think Davis or Cross, kind of a flip there. I know I'm not really answering it. Any of those three players would be awesome picks for the Baltimore Ravens. If I had to pick one, long as things a scheme fit, give me Linderbaum the center. If we did not get to any of your questions, that's okay. We know there are a lot of people watching live right now. Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. My DMs are open. That way you guys can hit me up with any questions you guys have.